my name's Janelle and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. In this video I'm going to be talking you through everything I made for my Me Made wardrobe during 2023. At the end of every year I love to film these roundup videos showcasing everything I've made throughout the year because A who doesn't love to brag about the clothes they've made and B it is just so nice to see everything that I've worked on throughout the year nicely on one rack like this. I have also made a tutorial for pretty much everything you can see on this rack and I'll have a list of all the videos and tutorials down in the description box below this video. So if you did want to have a go at making any of the items I'll be talking about then you can do that. <laughs> this collection of makes is definitely smaller than what I usually share at the end of every year and that is because I did spend six months in Japan and I did not make any clothes at all during that time. I had a full on break from my sewing machine for six months which was actually very needed. Um, sometimes it's good to have a break so you can come back more inspired than ever and to be honest my back has really appreciated the break as well. So without further ado let's get into it and let me show you everything I made for my me made wardrobe this year. Let's start with the dress that I am wearing which is this slight pattern hack of my daisy pattern. Basically I saw a dress on the website Tradlands and completely fell in love with it and realized that it was a very similar shape and style to my daisy pattern. So I had a go at recreating it using that pattern and I am so happy with the result. It is just ever so slightly more cropped than the daisy pattern and I've also changed out the sleeves and used the willow dress pattern sleeves instead, which actually work so nicely with this dress style. I also made this dress out of a bed sheet, so it's got that really lovely crisp cotton feel. It's a little bit structured, but in the best possible way. And obviously it's in my favorite burnt orange color. This is my favorite color to wear. The next dress I have to share is this smocked shift style dress. I was very lucky to get my hands on a smocking pleater this year. That was one of my goals for the year was to find a smocking pleater. They are very hard to come by nowadays because you can't buy them new anymore. But I managed to find one on Facebook Marketplace and I was so excited to have a go at making my first ever smocked dress. I have done a little bit of smocking in the past but usually it's only very like small little details such as like the ends of sleeves like this. For example, but now with this smocking pleater, I was able to complete a full dress project, which meant I could do the smocking detail all along the neckline. And I decided to have a go at a bishop style smocked dress because that is one of the most popular dress styles to make with smocking. And for some reason, smocking hasn't really taken off for adults in a big way, but I feel like it's just starting to happen. A lot of clothing brands this year have been coming out with beautiful smocked garments, which is just really exciting to see because for a long time it was just for infants and children. So yeah, this was all a bit of an experiment because obviously I'm still quite new to smocking and there aren't that many patterns available for women's clothing. So I had a go at making a bishop styled baby dress in my size and luckily it turned out exactly how I had hoped. Next I have my one and only knitted item that I made for the year and that is this burnt orange version of my rosary jumper. I made this jumper in a really beautiful rose pink colour a few years ago and I used a vintage pattern for it when I made it then and I love it but I just I'm not drawn to wearing pink very much so I knew for a while that I wanted to make it in my favorite burnt orange color and then Bendigo Woolen Mills came out with the most perfect burnt orange shade so I picked it up with this pattern in mind and I cannot begin to tell you how happy I am with this jumper. I have worn it to death since I finished it. I took it to Japan with me, wore it pretty much every day while it was still cold over there and yeah it has had so much wear. While making this jumper I also filmed the whole step-by-step -step process so if you're new to knitting or you've never knitted a lace pattern before then go and check that video out because I go through the entire process and I promise you it's a lot easier than it looks and I've shared the pattern as well. I actually got permission from the original publishers of this pattern to be able to share it with my audience so yeah, I'll leave that link below if you did just want to grab the pattern as well. Absolutely one of my favourite knitting patterns I've ever made. It is just such a joy to knit up and it's also easy enough that you can still watch TV while you're knitting. It's like the perfect 
knitting project. This next dress is probably my favorite dress I've made this year. This is the Ella dress pattern by Silver Saga Patterns. And oh my goodness, it's such a fun dress to wear. And it was also an incredibly fun dress to make as well. The pattern itself was just so unlike any pattern I'd ever sewn up before. The pieces were really interesting and a lot of the pieces were actually cut on the bias of the fabric, which just creates the most lovely flowy dress. This next dress is Oh, another one of my favorites. Like, it's so hard. I think I'm going to probably say that about every dress I'm sharing in this video, but this is another dress that I am just so, so in love with. It is this vintage-inspired dress here. I actually bought the fabric for this dress in Japan, so it just holds so many memories already because of that. And then I decided I wanted to make quite a statement dress out of this fabric because it is just such beautiful fabric. I love a floral fabric, but the fact that this floral is just so big I knew I wanted to make a statement dress from it so I decided to merge two vintage patterns together to create the ultimate like 70s style dress I absolutely love the length of this dress I love the big balloon puffy sleeves and what I also love about this dress is that I've used this loop trim throughout it to just give an extra added detail to this already stunning dress. I have not had a reason to wear this dress yet, but I can already tell like during the holiday season, all the different parties and like at New Year's Eve time and things like this dress is going to be my go-to because it's just that little bit extra special and just so fun, like such a fun statement dress. Next, I have another vintage inspired dress and that is this vintage Laura Ashley dress. I was really inspired by the 1970s versions of Laura Ashley dresses. They're always very like maxi length and they have square necklines like this and they also utilize trim in a really interesting way as well just to like again add that special little detail to a dress. And so I decided to have a go at making a vintage Laura Ashley dress for myself. Again I used a vintage pattern for this. I actually used a vintage maternity pattern so the finished dress is quite large on me but I ended up making this little tie to go with it so I can really cinch it in at the waist which I think looks a lot better on me personally. I also made this dress out of a bed sheet as well. I mean look at this fabric. I definitely think it was wasted as a bed sheet. It just screamed Laura Ashley vibes. Another dress that I'm excited to wear a lot this summer is this cute ruffled hem dress. I had kind of only just made this before we went to Japan and sadly didn't bring it with me. I really regretted not bringing it with me actually because it ended up getting so hot in Japan and this would have been perfect to wear but I kind of forgot about it. I don't know why but I forgot about it but I'm so keen that it's warming up here now so I can start wearing this dress. It's again that really comfortable shift style so like super comfortable doesn't sit on your skin at all, so on those really hot days it's just going to be so ideal. But you can also layer it really nicely as well, like I've already started layering it with like turtlenecks underneath and just like white t-shirts underneath looks really cute. Again, this was a pattern hack of one of my sewing patterns. This one was a pattern hack of my hazel pattern and I've shared all the steps in the video about this dress. So if you wanted to have a go at pattern hacking the hazel, you can do that. Now this dress is one I have worn to death already and that is this dreamy embroidered shirt dress. This fabric just called out to me when I saw it in Spotlight and I had to buy it immediately. It's this amazing green embroidered cotton fabric. It's got the cutest little flower embroidery all over it. I just I'm so in love with it and I'm so glad I bought it when I did because yeah the next time I was in Spotlight all the colors had sold out and it never even made it to the website so it was like a very limited edition fabric and as soon as I saw the fabric I knew exactly what I wanted to make and that was this shirred dress. It's just perfect for this style of dress. I just love how the sharing has gathered in the floral embroidery so it's like created a different look on the bodice and I also made special care to inset the sleeves properly so that they do not slip off my shoulder at all. It's just such a beautiful comfortable dress to wear and I wore this pretty much every single day when I was in Japan during summer. Next I have this super bright and fun dress that I made from a tablecloth. It's a Mosey Me 
tablecloth. The founder actually like designs all the artwork herself and is incredibly talented and creates the funnest prints. This dress is so fun. Like again, I've made quite a few of this shift style dress this year and this particular dress pattern just has the most fun sleeves. I am obsessed with them. It's just such a beautiful dress and it's just something a little bit fancy but not too over the top. Like it's just a really, really fun dress. This next item is something that I have made this year but I haven't yet finished the video for and the video will probably be going out first thing in the new year. And that is this dreamy puffer jacket. I picked up a like polyester bedspread from the op shop or thrift shop for $4. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to make a puffer jacket from it. I was really inspired by Freya Simone, who is an incredibly talented seamstress who upcycles all different types of blankets and bedspreads and things like that to create really cool puffer jackets and dresses and just really unique, beautiful, recycled fashion. And so when I saw this, I knew I wanted to make a puffer jacket inspired by Freya Simone. And this is the end result, which I am just so happy with. Like this is my kind of puffer jacket. And what I love about this jacket as well is that it's not burnt orange, but it goes so nicely with burnt orange, which means all of my burnt orange items in my wardrobe I can wear with this jacket. Plus it goes with everything else in my wardrobe as well. It is just, I'm obsessed. I'm in love with this. And yeah, stay tuned for the video coming soon and make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on that. Next up, I have my one and only sewing pattern that I brought out this year and that is the rosary shorts. Like I said, I've been in Japan for a lot of this year. So unfortunately I wasn't able to bring out any new sewing patterns, but I did manage to make this free sewing pattern for a pair of pyjama shorts to go along with my Sewing for Beginners series that I'd created this year. So yeah, if you are a complete beginner in sewing, I go through all the steps of what you need to know in order to start making your own clothes. And I do share this project as part of that series so you can have a go at your first ever sewing project, a pair of pyjama shorts. I think pyjama shorts are the perfect beginner's project because ultimately it doesn't matter if they're not 100% perfect because you are only going to be wearing them to bed. So it doesn't matter if you know, you're not completely happy with them. They're still going to be wearable and no one else is going to see them basically. And they also cover so many different skills like sewing, curves and creating an elasticated casing for the waistband. Um, it's also got pockets, which is exciting because none of my store-bought pajamas have pockets and I genuinely hate that about my store-bought pajamas because so often I just want to put my phone in my pocket when I'm wearing my jammies. Like, is that too much to ask for? But yeah, it's been so fun to see so many of you excited about this pattern and being able to Download it for free and give it a try, especially if it's your first ever pattern. The stakes are so low and you may as well give it a go. What have you got to lose? Uh, next up, I have this dress here, which is again made from a tablecloth. And this dress I've actually been calling my ultimate gathered dress. I love a good gathered dress and this dress has gone overboard with the gathers, which I absolutely love. It's got gathering here in the neckline and it's also got the most amazing gathered skirt which has then been like cinched in at the waist with some elastic to add even more gathering and this dress has been made literally just from a bunch of rectangles of fabric so again this is a great one for beginners you do need a bit of patience for all the gathering that this dress involves i also just really love the tablecloth i made this dress out of it's just this really subtle like highlight of pink on a cream background which it's just something so different and unlike anything else in my wardrobe, but I feel a little bit like picnic vibes when I wear this. And the last item I have to share with you is a very simple patchwork t-shirt. I made this t-shirt just before I left for Japan because I wanted an extra t-shirt to bring along with me. And I decided to use up some scraps in my fabric stash um, because I've made quite a few things over the last few years out of Jersey fabrics and I thought it'd be cool to kind of mash them all together into one project. So I had to go at making a t-shirt. I actually ended up just drafting this t-shirt pattern from another t-shirt I already own that fitted me well and shared how to do that in the video about it. It was super quick to make. 
super easy and I love that it's got like a bit of history of all the past projects I have been working on over the last few years as well. It's just a fun little keepsake. That is everything I have made for my Meme wardrobe during 2023. I did want to give one last special mention to my cross stitch a day project which isn't something for my wardrobe but it is something I made this year that I am so unbelievably proud of. Basically while I was in Japan I did a cross stitch a day to represent every single day of our trip. I'm just so in love with the finished project and I'm so glad I persevered with it and kept it up for the entire trip. It wasn't a chore by any means. I thoroughly enjoyed every single moment of making this finished project but now that I'm home it just really has been the best keepsake of our six months in Japan. I've made a whole video about this project and I'll leave that link below as well. Um, I'm so proud of it. I also go into some of the fun stories behind some of the images. So yeah, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in seeing, then definitely go and have a watch of that. Something I do like to do at the end of each of these videos is just to pick out my favorite item of the year. It's always hard every year, but I think if I had to choose three favorites, I think definitely my rosary jumper, just because of the sheer amount I've worn this. I also think I have to choose my shirt dress, just because the fabric is such a dream and again, for the sheer amount of times I've worn this dress, it just has to be up there as one of my favourite all-time dresses ever. And then lastly, I think it's a toss-up between the puffer jacket and the yellow dress. I think I'm going to go with the yellow dress just because... It was such a fun dress to make and an even more fun dress to wear. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end. This is actually going to be my last video of 2023 and my last video for a few weeks because I'm going to take a bit of time off over Christmas. Thank you so much for all of your support this year. It's been an interesting year with me going overseas for six months and content has been a little bit different this year and I just really appreciate you sticking by me anyway and Without you, I wouldn't be able to go overseas for six months because without you, I wouldn't have this dream job of mine that I can literally work from anywhere. So I just really hope you know how much you watching my videos means to me. And yeah, I just feel so supported and very, very grateful for all of your support. And yeah, I hope you have a lovely end to the year and a great start to 2024. I'm excited for everything I've got planned to share with you next year. I have so many videos planned and I cannot wait to get started on them. Thank you so much for watching this video until the very end and I will see you in the next one.